All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome in. It is Wednesday night, 8.59, just turned 9 o'clock. So you know what I always say, like some of the commenters have already put in there, if you ain't early, you're late. So uh, hope everyone has had a good day. Um, there's been a lot of speculation, a lot of anticipation for number 18, JT Daniels, right? And, and, and most thought he was going to get a chance to play and a chance to start this weekend against Missouri. That obviously has been curtailed and delayed and postponed to December 19th. Um, so the mailman might have an opportunity to get healthy. So this could be a totally moot point. But I wanted to address this JT Daniels guy. Everybody now knows, that, you know, everybody knows the five-star recruit, quote-unquote five-star recruit. Um, people say he pushed Trevor Lawrence and Justin Fields for the number one overall spot, yada, yada, yada. That's fine. He did all that in high school, Okay. And, and here's my thing about high school quarterbacks. They are, for the most part, who they surround themselves with, okay? Prime example, Justin Fields went to Harrison High School. Um, name me a Harrison High School wide receiver. I dare you. Um, go ahead. Go, go Google. Find me a Harrison High School wide receiver that you know of um, that has a prominent name or, for that matter, a prominent recruiting ranking. Go ahead. Um, Trevor Lawrence played at Cartersville High School. Find me. Find me a wide receiver at Cartersville High School that Trevor Lawrence played with that you now know the name of, okay? I got three of them. I got three of them that played with JT Daniels in high school. A guy by the name of Amon Ross St. Brown. He's going to be a top 50, top 60 pick in the NFL draft this year. One of the best wide receivers in college football, okay? He had a guy by the name of Brew McCoy, who was a sophomore his senior year, I believe. Um, Five-star, number nine overall player in the 2019 class, according to 24-7 Sports. And he had a guy by the name of Nico Bamigio. Bamigio? Nico Bamigio, okay? Four-star, plays at Cal right now. Had three guys on his high school roster that are now playing big-time Division One football, all in the Pac-12, all state in the California area. So, yeah, he threw for 4,100 yards as a junior or a senior in high school. Lit it up. Played for Matter Day High School. Probably had a handful of Division One offensive linemen right in front of him. It looked great. Looked awesome. Then he went to the opening and lit it up, right? Threw with JT or threw with uh threw with uh Trevor Lawrence and Justin Fields and almost beat him out, right? Who was he throwing to all week at the opening? Amon Ross St. Brown. Who was the only quarterback there at the opening that had a wide receiver that he'd played with throughout the year and throughout his high school career? JT Daniels. He's going to look better in that type of scenario. I'm going to go and let you know right now. Um, there's this little something called continuity uh, between a quarterback and a wide receiver, knowing how a guy moves and knowing how a guy breaks. Uh, it's pretty important when trying to play, you know, a game of pitch and catch. So I'm going to throw that one out too. So what I care about most, and you guys know about this, I care about tape. I, I grind the tape. It is my MO. Grindthetape.com. That's what we do. Patreon uh, over there, .com forward slash Brooks Austin. It's what we do. We grind the tape. It is the most important evaluation tool. Not how fast you run, not how tall you are, not, not how far you can throw the ball in the air on air, um, not some seven-on-seven seven camp. I don't care about those things. Yeah, it's a great evaluation point for me to see what your body looks like, how you compete, things like that. It's all great. The most important thing is what you do on the field, whether that be Friday night or Saturday night, what I can see on tape, how you respond to things you know, in a live situation. So that's what I'm going to bring you here tonight. Um, I'm, I'm going to show you, <clears throat> excuse me, I keep doing those things. I'm going to show you tonight on the film evaluation why, hey, there's some things to clean up. And there's still some things to clean up, guys. I've got it on good authority that there were some mechanical issues that this coaching staff at Georgia wanted to clean up and wanted to get right. It wasn't just the knee, guys. There were some mechanical things that I'm going to show you right here that just don't look like they are supposed to, okay? What I'm going to show you tonight is there is a guy right here by the name of JT Daniels that has the mechanics and is trying to have the mechanics of a guy by the name of Aaron Rodgers. And if you don't believe me, wait around for it. I'm going to show you exactly what it looks like. Um, the only thing is Aaron Rodgers is one of a kind for a reason, ladies and gentlemen. He is the only NFL quarterback that does things the way he does. Why? Because he's the only one to ever make it work. So without further ado, Let's hop right into the tape, okay? So first thing you need to know about USC in 2017 um, or 2018, excuse me, his freshman year out there, they won five games, okay, under JT Daniels as a starting quarterback. In those five games, listen to this. In those five games, the USC Trojans rushed for 219 yards against UNLV, 
They rushed for 113 yards against Washington State. They rushed for 253 yards against Arizona. They rushed for 62 yards against Colorado. I'll give you that one, JT. And then they rushed for a staggering 332 yards against Oregon State at the end of the year. Okay? That's being helped out by a running game. So I don't, I don't really want to hear these, you know, hey, he didn't have much help. No, he, he had a hell of a rushing attack. They averaged, I think, over 140 yards on the ground per game at USC his freshman year. So when you protected him as a freshman, he won. When you threw him out there and said, go win a football game, when he threw for 57 times or whatever it was against Notre Dame, he took an L. Um, and I think believe they scored seven points. So, yeah, he racked up the yards in between the 20s. But when they got inside the 20s in the red zone, things kind of fell apart. And how do you know that they're protecting him? This is his first pass attempt against Washington State right here. Third and 11, 10 minutes in the first quarter. They've already had a full drive. And now they get to the situation where they absolutely have to throw the ball. They have to get him out there and throw the ball. And what happens? First pass attempt right here. He takes a sack, guys. All right? So there, it's clear. Washington State did this all night long. They had, you know, a young quarterback. What are they going to do? They're going to engage eight, play cover one, you know, covers man-to-man underneath, underneath with a single high safety and come after him. And he takes a sack, okay? I just wanted to show you that play for a reason uh, because I'm, a, I'm just showing you that it took him a full drive and about five minutes worth of game time to even trust him to drop back and throw the football. Obviously, freshman, I believe it's his first ranked opponent, yada, 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 trying to protect him, all good and well. 446 is where we're going next. All right, so what you can't do about this guy and what you won't hear me do all night long is you can't question the arm talent. You cannot. You cannot question the arm talent. When this guy is throwing in between zero to 25 yards, he's electric. When he can just rely on his waist up, he's absolutely phenomenal. Look at this ball, okay? Left hash or right hash, guy at the top of the numbers. He's going to run a hitch right here, and he's going to throw this about 20 yards in the air and cover about eight yards vertically and put it on the dude's chest, okay? You can't even see the ball. You can't. It is traveling so fast, and I, I, that's what you won't hear me say tonight. The dude doesn't have great a great arm. What he doesn't have is great mechanics, and I'm going to show you that here in about two minutes, okay? Great arm. Look, you can't even track the football. I mean, it is flying out there, okay? So they trusted his arm, even as a freshman, on these quick intermediate routes, hitches, slants, digs, all this stuff. When we're talking post and uh, deep comebacks, big boy digs at 15 yards, those are the things that they didn't trust as a coaching staff. And, again, you'll see why. I'm going to show you kind of guy. I ain't just going to sit here and give you an opinion. I'm going to show you why I feel the way I do about an opinion. All right? So here's our first underthrow of the game. The very first time they drop the kid back, they're running a double move right here, a post corner down here with, I believe this is uh, Michael Sam Pittman right here. Get that? It's Michael Pittman. He plays for the Jets right now. All right? Ball critically underthrown. He had to slow down for that ball. All right? And why? Why, Brooks, did he have to slow down for the ball? I'm going to show you here in a second. All right. So take a, take a look at it from the tight. And I'm going to slow it down here in a minute, guys, when we actually get into, you know what? We'll get into it right now. Anybody see what I see? I see front knee hyperextension. I see no power into the ground. And I'm not going to try to get too technical here, guys. But if you guys know anything about my history, I am a big, big body movements and body patterns type of guy. That's what I care about because that's how you become efficient. That's how you deliver balls and deliver strikes down the field with consistent, repetitive mechanics at the quarterback position. It is the most important thing. So here's the deal. Guys, look at this front foot, okay? At the point of foot strike, he is his knee is fully hyperextended. It is straight-legged everything. This is all arm. This is absolutely all arm. And matter of fact, the front foot on most of these, if you can see it, the back heel comes up. Watch the heel. See the heel come up off the ground? They call that popping. They call that popping the front foot. All right? Now, I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you two guys, two of the guys that I think are the best to ever do it, the best to ever do it. One guy right here by the name of Thomas Brady. Look where he's at at front, front foot strike. Look at that. Boom. Looks like a pitcher, right? Look how perfect those mechanics are. Look how powerful he is. Look how he's putting power to the ground 
through his cleats. Watch the hyperextension at the point of release. Watch it. We're going to show this over and over and over again. Give you a nice long look at it. Look at that bend in that front knee. Ain't no hyperextension in that front knee. Ain't no hyper. And they're pointing out right now. Ain't no hyperextension in that front knee. He's going to bring it as he releases the football. He's going to transfer motion from his back foot through his arm at the point of release. Okay? Let's see if we can get to it. Watch it. Oh, come on, man. Quit doing that crap. I don't care about it. He's showing you rotational energy right now. I think JT's got that. That's fine. See, as he's releasing the football, the knee is starting to hyperextend, not hyperextending at the front foot strike. All right. So here's what I think JT Daniels thinks he is. I think JT Daniels thinks he is a guy by the name of Aaron Rodgers. So let me show you Aaron Rodgers' deep balls. Watch this mechanics on Aaron Rodgers. Give me a second. Make sure I didn't lose you. What in the heck is going on here? All right. Watch the deep ball mechanics on Aaron Rodgers. Watch this. Let's slow it down for everybody. Check it out. Greatest to ever do it in, in terms of this stuff right here. I don't think we're going to. All right. See how he's fully extended. Got very little weight on his front foot. Let's get you a better picture of it. That's an awful picture of it. I know there's a good one in here. Watch that front knee. Yeah, there's no weight on it. He's not leaning on it at all. He is doing what we call that pop step. Watch that front foot. It comes off the ground. Okay, hard to look at it there. Can we get a good shot, cameraman, please? Can we get a good shot? This might be it. Boom, did you see the front foot drag back? It's called pop stepping. So here's what he's trying to do. What Aaron Rodgers has perfected over 20 years of doing this is that front foot pops off the ground at the exact point of release, okay? It is an elasticity. How about that big vocabulary word? It's an elasticity type of movement, okay? We see this. Imagine being a hitter, right? Having all of your power at the point of contact. That's what these types of quarterbacks that throw like this are trying to do. They're trying to release the football at the exact point that that front foot pops up off the ground. This is him on the run, so we ain't going to see it there. And it causes that whipping action, right? It causes that ball to really jump out of his hand. Now, the problem is, we'll see, look, he's got nothing on his front foot right here. He's just all arm talent and arm flick. Now, okay, Aaron Rodgers, the greatest to ever do it. The greatest to ever do it. JT Daniels, not quite there. Now, the problem with this type of mechanics are, if you're not perfect with them, you're going to miss. You're going to miss deep balls more times than you connect on them. You're going to underthrow balls like he does right here. You're going to overthrow balls like we're going to show you in a minute, okay? You're going to miss balls left and right the entire time. Your deep ball accuracy is going to be very, very erratic and sporadic, okay? So when you do that kind of stuff, unless you're Aaron Rodgers, no one else in the history of college and professional football has ever succeeded doing it, okay? So if you're trying to be the one of one, you've got a problem. And I believe that that's what they're trying to correct uh, in the mechanics department at Georgia. And, you know, whether there's some reluctancy or to actually change, I don't know. That's not for me to sit here and tell you. But what I am telling you is this ain't perfect. This ain't a guy that's a quote-unquote five-star. All right, hey, shout out to uh, shout out to Georgia right here. That's where they stole this from. Um, this is, I think, his name is Zach Grinch. Now he's the head. I think he's the defensive coordinator at Oklahoma now. He went from Washington State to Ohio State. He is the king of this pre-snap shift causing false starts. That's where Georgia got it from. So y'all get two and one tonight. Y'all get a, a lot of education tonight. We're going to see. We already took the 601. All right. I'm going to show you the bad mechanics again back here. Uh, 325. We're going to roll back just a second. We can get the computer to load. This is probably bad MO or bad tactics on my part. Um, so a lot of this is a freshman too. Now, a lot of people are saying, hey, he was supposed to be a senior in high school. Um, I get it. But hey, seniors in high school could catch snaps. So a lot of this. Just a, a, a decent snap went right through his, his wickets, if you will. And then 708 saw a lot of this too. Um, the difference between, I think, JT and Aaron, the other one is, um, Aaron's got some of the biggest hands in the NFL. 
I don't know how big this kid's hands are, um, but if you got monstrous hands, you would never do this. Not a day in your life. Let's watch the tight cut. You would never do this if you've got monster hands with a dry football. You would never stick the ball out to go put it in the stomach of a running back and get it nicked and then end it, it end up on the ground. Okay. So to do this perfect pop step stuff, look, he barely got touched. And that's the ball on the ground. This right here tells me probably got small hands or maybe doesn't have really, really strong hands. Right. So with all that whip in action, you've got to be able to hold on to the football until the exact point of release to get that, like we said, elasticity, that pop in motion, that ball to jump out of your hands. Now, the thing is, it's great when it works. Um, again, we're going to tell you, there ain't no doubt about this kid's arm talent and arm, quote unquote, strength. The problem is there's no consistency on the deep ball. And why? Because he's got poor mechanics. Look at this. Still, no, not really getting down onto his front foot. Okay. But watch this ball. This is perfect ball. play. Actually, this is bad ball placement. I'm going to show you perfect ball placement here in a second. The very next clip. They come right back to this. Okay. Washington State bailed them out all night long on pass interference because of underthrown balls like this. Okay. When our mechanics in our lower half are inconsistent, when we don't have that whip in action timed up, when we haven't thrown 300,000 balls in our lifetime like Aaron Rodgers has, we're going to have issues. We're going to have inconsistencies like this right here. And then guess what? Sometimes it looks perfect. Sometimes it looks amazing. This is two plays later. I mean, look at this. This ain't great mechanics. Look at his, look at his platform right here. He's standing flat-footed at this point, just tossing this ball. But watch where it ends up. Boom. Away from the defender. It looks great, guys. This is why you're going to have days where you're going to hear reports, and I, I'll, I'll be right there with them. You're going to hear reports where, oh, JT Daniels lit it up today in practice. And then the next day you're going to hear, oh, man, JT Daniels was like a JV football player today in practice. You're going to hear things like this. Why? Because his platform's inconsistent. His front hip opens up too early. Often. You know, but he does have this. He can just sit there and just toss the ball and put it exactly where he wants to sometimes. Not all the time. That's why your 59% completion percentage uh, through your first 12 college starts. And yeah, you had a 73.5% uh, completion percentage in one half against um, Fresno State. We're going to show you that one too. It wasn't all cherries and rainbows in that game either. 922. It's my other problem with him. Look, I think he's got – he's got – or he wants to have Aaron Rodgers mechanics with Brett Favre decision-making. Watch this. I, d I do not understand this, okay? So what they're going to do is they're going to run, I believe, a post route with uh, Michael Pittman right here, and he's reading the front side safety. What does the safety do? Oh, excuse me. They're running a slot post over here on the top. What does the safety do? The safety, safety opens to the field. He's running that ball down. Now, again, they get away with a brutal pass interference at the top, but this ball should be picked off by Washington State. Through 14 interceptions as a freshman, this should be 15, okay? I'm going to show you a bunch more that could have been 16 and 17 and 18. All right, watch the mechanics here. It don't look great. Look, this, this is why I don't understand. As soon as the ball snapped and he does his play action fake, he is reading 25. He is staring right at his face. And then when he opens up to the field, guess what JT does? JT opens up to the field with him, say, all right, I mean, bet. I'm going to throw it anyways. I'm sure you ain't getting there. I got the biggest arm in the world. Everybody told me since I was a little kid, I got the strongest arm they ever did see. I'm going to throw it anyways. Why? 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 Here's what the read is, guys. The read is, read the backs or the backside safety. If he opens up to the field, guess what? Take the daggum comeback on the bottom to your best wide receiver. If he opens up, you take the comeback. Done. It is a single person read. It ain't even a, a half field read. It is stare at the safety. He's going to tell you where to go with the football. So why? Again, attempting to have Aaron Rodgers mechanics, but he's at about 50% of that. And he's attempting to have the decision making of Brett Favre. Aaron Rodgers has thrown 10 interceptions in a single season. Hasn't done it in a decade. He does not turn the football over. He makes great decisions every single football game, constantly. 
10, 20. What are we seeing here, Brooks? Another underthrown ball. Okay. They're trying to hit a, a hitch and go right here with Michael Pittman. Or I don't know who eight is, but they got him. He is leaving, baby. He is gone. But underthrown football. And again, they get bailed out with a pass interference, which is great. We guys, we get we get well, you know, half the, you know, whatever, 15 yards, spot of the foul in the NFL. You get some yardage. Great. But this is a touchdown, guys. This dude just cooked this safety. It should be a touchdown. But instead, it is an underthrown football. Why? Because the lower half mechanics are poor. Okay? Lower half mechanics are poor. And, guys, this ain't changed. In, in fact, it might have gotten, it, it, it gotten worse. You know why? Because this back foot that he loves to stay on, this back foot that he's constantly on, guess what just happened? He's had a life-altering knee injury to it. We're going to show you that one, too. Life, life altering. He's had two surgeries on it that we know of. Might have been, it might have been another cleanup job. We don't know. So he he's all back, he's all back half of his body through his throwing motion. And guess what? His back half of his body just spent 14, 16, 17 months rehabbing. Buddy, you better start getting onto your front foot. You better start bending your knee at front foot strike. You best. Or else we're going to keep doing stuff like this. Or we got guys running wide open down the field and we're hitting DBs in their helmet with the football. All right. So we just bagged on them for five minutes. Let's give you some, let's give you some of the goods. Let's give you some of that stuff that you love to see. That stuff that everybody, you know, is anticipating him doing constantly. Like there ain't no bad in his game. They see the five star next to his name on whatever recruiting website, and he's the biggest name transfer in college football when he transfers in at Georgia. And everybody's like, oh, he must be great. Nah, dude, grind the tape. You'll figure it out. But he does do this stuff. He does do this stuff. He, all right, I'm going I'm to show it to you from the tight. Watch how quickly he's through these reads. Watch. And he knows his backup. He knows where it's at. He knows where his bailout's at. Boom, right to it. Okay. Platform awful he can't get into it he's you know feet this way ball going this way okay none of that is mechanically correct but he can't he can't because there's a dude coming right into his face so he can't get mechanically correct so what's he do he just flicks it boom ball placement perfect okay so he does that stuff too okay there's there's some real real highlights to this dude's football game okay but i think that's the problem with the fan base right now all y'all been seeing is the highlights Ain't nobody brought it to you with the real. Ain't, ain't nobody gave it to you where you're sitting there watching the whole game, giving the highs and the lows, okay? Let's watch it full speed so y'all can see how quickly he's working these. Check this one, okay? Boom, 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 ball out. With no, no lower half to it. All right, let's go to the next one. Going to 17. All right, so we showed you, you know, quick getting through your reads. Now let's show you what my favorite word when talking about quarterbacks is, an anticipatory throw. Throw it before the guy's out of his break. Look, bad snap. He doesn't matter. He's coming back to the top. Look, the ball is out right now. The ball is out. The wide receiver ain't even broke out of his route. He's running a comeback up here at the top, ain't even broke out. Now he's out. Ball's already to him. Okay, watch it from the tight. So bad snap doesn't really matter because he's working. He knows where he's going pre-snap anyways. This is the other thing. He was 100% check with me offense. He said down, said hut, looked to the sideline, said, oh, what you want, coach? Oh, bet. We'll run that. Okay, bad snap doesn't matter. Quick feet, whip. I mean, look at the whip. That ball's just, ball's got sound effects, right, coming out. That ball's humming. Great. Great. All right. So. That, that's the thing. We got really, really highs, and we got some really, really, really lows. That ball is pretty good ball placement, too, on that one. Going to 17.55, and this is where he's kind of – I think he's a, a guy that gets in a groove, okay? And when he does, he's dangerous. All right, cover two, whole shot right here on the goal line. So they're running cover two. I would. It looks to cover two to me, but it's goal line cover two, which means this 
uh, corner or this safety has now shifted outside the hash. They're leaving the middle of the field blatantly open. They don't care. They know it's three by one over here, and they know they're probably working um, to the pylon. So what the corner does is he sits anticipating this out route, so he's there. Now, this ball can only be thrown in this window right here, and it's got to be hum. I mean, this ball's got to be whistling when it comes out, and look at the ball placement. Wham! That ball is right there where only Michael Pittman can catch it. It's just dropped. Watch it from the tight. Okay. And again, I still don't, I still don't think the platform is perfect right here. It's not. Look, front front knee completely completely locked out and you can see how he's trying to whip that front knee. That front knee is rocking through the point of release. Watch it slow mode. You might be able to see the front foot pop up too. You did. Did you see the heel pop up? Okay. This is uncharacteristic. There are two guys. Matter of fact, I talked to a uh, quarterbacks coach that's out there in California that uh, has seen JT since he was 12 years old. There's two guys um, apart from JT that do this and do it well. One is named Aaron Rodgers. Pretty rare fight air right there. And the other one is Bryce Young. He's at Alabama. They're the only two guys that this dude uh, has ever seen that throw with this type of mechanics. Bryce Young and Aaron Rodgers. Listen to who we're talking about. Okay. And Bryce still ain't proved it yet. He still ain't figured it out because he ain't had an opportunity to. But check out the ball placement. Wham. That's a, that's a damn good ball, guys. That's a great ball. On a 19-10. Actually, we got, we got two more games to watch, so we're going to speed up just a little bit. We're going to 20-24. So this is why I tweeted today. Inside 25 yards, inside 30 yards, dude is phenomenal. I mean, phenomenal. He's great when he can just rely on waist up. When all it is, all the throw requires is his waist up, he is great. When he has to do this, it is not good. See that foot just come off the ground? Watch this ball. Watch this ball. Pittman's expecting this ball outside the hash. Watch where this ball lands. This ball lands over here. Way over here. And you know how I know that this ball is just poor mechanics, poor timing. He's trying to get that. Look, that foot's already popping. And he ain't, he, he's already, he released the ball before the elasticity point, right? The ball, the, the toe popping up like we showed you with Rodgers. The ball was out before he got to that point. Watch. The ball is out right now. Now, the front foot is still on the ground. We haven't gotten to that front knee lockout. We haven't pop that front foot off, nothing. So the timing on it is completely different than what we saw earlier, okay? And guess what happens? Look, his shoulders are squared down the hash, guys. His eyes are squared down the hash. His release point, his follow-through are right down the hash. This ball right now, this is where this ball is already. At like five yards after he's released it, it's already inside the hash. And it ends up outside or to the middle of the field, okay? That's that's what happens when you got bad mechanics or unnatural mechanics or mechanics that only one other guy in the history of the world has made successful. 2055, um, you already knew this, but this ain't like a freak athlete. I wouldn't even say he's a very good athlete. Um, he just He's just another guy when it comes to uh, – athletic movements in terms of running here. I'm going to put it back into normal speed. Okay. This ain't like make you miss type athleticism. This is, I can get five yards and get down type of athleticism. I would say he's of the four quarterbacks. He is fourth in terms of athleticism before his knee injury. So there you go. All right. So I've been bagging. I've been bagging on the deep ball accuracies because the mechanics aren't great, but watch. When he finally does time up these mechanics, when he finally does get this down, what he's trying to do, watch what happens. He throws an absolute daggum dime. I mean, a dime. When he actually gets it, look, ball just came out, front knee popped, and look at the ball. That's a dime. That is an absolute dime. Look at that, bam. Only one place in the world for that guy to catch it, outside shoulder. 
Let's see if we can slow the mechanics down. Is it all arm again? I'm betting it's all arm again. And he's just being a talent. He's just being a talent. Yeah, and he is. He is holding the ball like a loaf of bread, Brian. Got a comment right here from Brian. Absolutely. Ball, ball security is a real problem. They we can't see his knees, unfortunately, because the fat linemen are in the way. But check out the ball placement. Yank. He does it every once in a while. Problem is, it's only every once in a while. And it ain't like he didn't have weapons, guys. This is USC. They always got wide receivers. They're always getting open. So, you know, it's just you can't always just live off your arm talent, especially coming over to the SEC. Last play we're going to watch on this clip, and then we're going to switch over. We're going to 2907. Now not only are his, his lower body mechanics inconsistent, now I'm going to show you his upper body mechanics can be inconsistent. He's going to completely drop his arm slot right here for absolutely no apparent reason. There's no need to do this. He just trying to, I don't know, look, this ball, this ball comes out like this, like a slider, and watch what ends up happening. Ball's underthrown. And guess what? Yep, he's doing it. Yep, he's doing it. He's bailing them out with another pass interference. All night long, they got bailed out on these. Why? Because JT Daniels kept underthrowing footballs. Let's go to 102 at the Texas Tate. We're going to close tonight with that uh, his opening game of 2019. All right, this is a simple smash concept. Everybody in the world runs it. They're going to run a corner from the inside guy or what we call the number two wide receiver, and they're going to run a hitch from the wide receiver up at the top, the number one wide receiver. Watch it. Smash route. Everybody runs it. Boom, there it is. Now, what you're supposed to be doing is reading the corner because he knows he's got man-to-man -man coverage or he thinks he's got man-to-man -man coverage. What you're supposed to be doing is either A, reading the whole defender. What the heck just happened to the film there? Reading the whole defender, which would be this guy, or with the guy playing off, you read the corner. See what he's doing. With the corner playing off, you are to read him. If he takes, if he opens his hips like that, you are to take the hitch right now. Take the hitch. Get the ball out. Take it to him. Do not do what he's about to do right here, which in the SEC, guys, I'm telling you right now, this is interception number 16 on the season. We already showed you interception number 15. Look at that. I'm telling you, an SEC uh, star corner, Tyreek Stevenson, um, you know, old number 13 from Alabama, that dude's picking that ball up. That freshman, by the way, at Alabama is playing absolutely just lights out right now for Alabama, number 13. All right, so this dude's in trail. He's in man-to-man -man coverage. This ball is absolutely picked. Absolutely should be picked. Instead, he gets away with one, and it's a reception. Number one's a beast. Now, nah, Patrick Sertan is number two, Brian. We're going all the way to 11.53. Boom. There we go. What are we looking at here? All right. Poor decision making. Poor decision making. Guys, what do we tell you on this channel all the time? Yeah. I am praising Malachi Moore. That's his name. Malachi Moore. Freak. Dude is balling out right now at Alabama. Balling out. My God. I think he has two fumble recoveries for a touchdown this season as a freshman. Um, how about this, guys? We tell you all the time. If you are pumping the football, you need to throw the football out of bounds. Do not do this. Don't you ever do this. Not only are you throwing it basically into double coverage, you're not really competing with the ball. That ball's got to be basically either way out of bounds or where only your guy can catch the ball. See, Jeremiah, we got we got an adamant follower of the, uh, of the show right here. Sorry. Pump fake, throw it away. Exactly. If you are pumping, you are pumping for a reason. Why is JT Daniels pumping right now? Because the dude is covered like a blanket right now. That wide receiver he's trying to get to. So what's he do? He just stands on his back foot and just, just uh, get out of my hands. Uh, I'm great. Everybody been telling me I'm, uh, I'm great. I got the best arm everybody's ever seen. Uh, I'm just going to throw it right there. Nope. Wrong. Interception. One of 14 as a freshman. Trent, I know. Trent, I know. Here, here we go. We got one of these guys. He finally showed up. We got one of these guys. It's his freshman year. It's his worst season. I know. What you want me to do? Watch his high school tape? 
what you want me to do? Call Kirby Smart and say, hey, can I get the practice tape, coach? Ain't going to happen. Saying that ain't going to happen. What we are going to do is we're going to watch the first half of his sophomore year. And guess what? I'm going to show you there's still some problems. Okay, so just wait. I'm going to get there. Always, always guys that up in here act like I don't know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. We good, baby. Just wait for me. Just wait for me. Stick around long enough. We're going to get there. 1335 is where we're going next. What we got here? Oh, hey, where's the post snap eye control? So what they're doing here is they're just running straight go. Ain't no if fans or bust about it. Michael Pittman, just go, baby. Just go. Just run. And I'm going to throw the ball up. I'm going to go get you. Check that front knee. What's happening to that front knee? Oh, straight locked out. Front knee's popping. Front foot's popping. So here's my problem. We already talked about the mechanics. Now we're talking about the intricacies of the quarterback position. Hey, guys, why don't we keep our eyes down the middle of the field? We know where we're going. Coach Dunn told you you're taking the shot. So let's hold the safety. Let's hold the safety where he is. Let's back him straight down the hash. Matter of fact, we might want to look right so we can get him to open his hips to the left. That would be a novel idea, wouldn't it? That would be a great idea, Brooks, but instead, nope, we're going to open right up to it. We're going to open right up to it. Watch what the safety does. He's still back pedal. He just opened up right now. You can't see him, but he just opened up to the field. And guess who gets into the play at the end? Number seven, the safety. Guess who's right there? Now it's double coverage. Number seven. So if our mechanics are poor, our decision making's poor, our eye discipline's poor, our bar, our ball security's poor. What's good other than our arm talent? Something that everybody told us has been great our whole life. Look at the front foot popping. Okay. That front, we are jumping off the ground. Literally, there is one person in the history of football to do this and do it successfully. And it's Aaron Rodgers. One person. And this ain't changed, guys. This ain't changed. As a matter of fact, if anything, it's gotten worse because all this weight, all this torque he's putting on this back knee, that's the knee he tore. We got more, baby. We got a whole half a page of notes left. 15 tens, where we're going next. 15 tens, where we're going next. Hey, he's got zero fear of throwing the deep ball, though. So that's good. He's got zero fear of it. But hey, how about this? How about how about left foot pointing square down the hash, chest pointing square down the hash, our square, our internal rotation pointing straight down the hash. Watch well, where he's trying to put this football. He's trying to put this football damn near on the top of the numbers. No wonder the ball's underthrown, man. No wonder. Hey, but you gave your wide receiver a chance, and he went up there and made a play for you. Great. That's why that dude was a – that's Michael – one of these wide receivers. That's Pittman right there. Number eight ain't bad either. The dude makes plays all day. I'm going to have to go find out where he's at. I guarantee he's in an NFL camp somewhere. Look at that. But, yeah, that – I mean, what do you what do you do? I got some guys questioning right here. Is that more on him or a QB coach for not correcting or a bit of both? I'm going to show you. Um, he does the same thing mechanically in the Fresno game that he started the season with as a sophomore. That everybody's, oh, he was lighting it up. He was 21 for 24 before he got hurt. Oh, he's great. He figured out the stuff. Mechanics are still awful. Mechanics are still, he's doing what he wants to do. So, yeah, the coach can get in there and correct it. The coach can tell him over and over and over again, hey, we got to clean these things up mechanically. Hey, we got to clean these things up mechanically. He's got to be willing to change it. If he's not willing to change it, I can sit there and tell him over and over again. If he's not going to be coachable, that's on him. I'm going to tell you right now, ain't no quarterback coach in the world letting this crap fly over and over again. Ain't no QB coach in the world sitting here saying, hey, that's great work right there, 18. Great job.
I don't know what J Jacob Eason. I got some commenters talking about Jacob Eason's mechanics. I don't know what Jacob Eason you've been watching. And that dude's six five. He can get away with some minor issues. He's six five. He's about six one and a half. This ain't no big guy. I like him rolling though. I'll tell you that right now. I like him doing this kind of stuff. He got some easy juice right here. That's great ball placement right there. Again, anything inside 15, 25, inside 30 yards, great for you, baby. I'm all there for you. You look great. Look like a five-star that everybody wants to call you. You look awesome, baby. Um, anything after that, any deep ball, any deep comeback, anything that actually requires great mechanics, not good. Not good. And what's Georgia having a problem with right now? What are they having a problem with? They're having a problem with deep ball accuracy. Well, I'm I'm here for this. I'm here for all of this. If you want to design your offense off this stuff right here, I'm here for this. That'll play every day. It's a drop. I think it's a drop, but that ball can only be in one spot. Seventeen thirty-four. All right, here's the thing. That zero fear of throwing deep shots, it's going to cost you. It's going to cost you in the SEC. I'm telling you right now. And this is why I hear things about how, you know, again, one day he's lighting it up, throwing four or five touchdowns in practice in the next He's throwing interception after interception after interception. Why? Because he does crap like this. He is absolutely 1,000% staring at this boundary corner right now. He is 100% staring at him. He sees that he is about to play this corner that they're running. They're running a basic, again, a basic smash concept, except this time it's three by one, and they're running a quick comeback or a hitch right here from number two, and number three is running the corner. That's all they're doing. They're running a deep hitch right here, or excuse me, a hitch here, a hitch here, and a corner right here. Simple smash concept. You are supposed to be reading. Actually, they crisscross number two. I apologize. I like this. I like this. I believe this is T. Martin calling plays um, for USC and designing plays as an offensive coordinator. I'm digging all this that they're doing in the middle right here. Um, what I'm not digging is the quarterback wanting to force this ball into double coverage and it getting damn near picked off. That's what I'm not digging. Why? Because we're, we're our, our eyes aren't right. We talk all the time about eyes having to be right. Kirby Smart does about defenders' eyes being right. Quarterback's eyes got to be right, too. Watch. He is flat out staring at that corner, and he's going to throw it anyways. He's going to throw it anyways. This is the difference, guys. Aaron Rodgers has these mechanics, but guess what? Rodgers ain't doing this nonsense. Rodgers is going to whip that comeback right here. He's going to throw it to Devontae Adams, or in this case, Michael Pittman Jr., and throw a damn seed right to his chest, and Pittman's going to do something after the catch like he always does. That's the difference. Appreciate you, Colby. We normally don't take comments in these. Um, Appreciate the super sub, brother. Um, you know, other than saying thank you, that's all I can say. Um, hit me up. I got some T-shirts and some merch coming in. Uh, find me on Twitter at Brooks Austin SI. I'll get you a shirt, okay? First super sub of the night. Always get some merch. P appreciate you, brother. Um, all right, here we go. Back to the film. Let's go to let's go to nineteen forty four. Show you some good stuff. Show you some deep ball that actually got hit. Think. All right, occasionally you'll hit these. Occasionally you will. Does not mean the mechanics are correct. This dude is running wide butt open. I mean, ain't nobody within seven yards of him. Great ball, though. Great ball. Threw it from the 15-yard line. This ball lands, I believe, 
the 35 yard line. So that's 15 yards plus 35 yards. That's a 50 yard throw in the air. Great throw. Great throw. Occasionally, again, you'll hit these. But I'm going to tell you what, he missed a lot more than he hit. Why? Because the mechanics. Mechanics aren't, not only are they not consistent, they're uncharacteristic. This is not something that most quarterbacks do. Again, I showed you the GOAT, right? The greatest to ever do it mechanically. Tom Brady is the greatest to ever do it because his mechanics are the same constantly. Constantly. is a repetitive motion every single day when he goes to work. 21-27, last clip we're going to show you of this game, and then we're going to show you the one that everybody's talking about. Oh, he looked great in his last football game. Okay, we're going to get there. Don't worry. How about this one? Sometimes it don't matter. This is what I'm saying. This dude's so talented from the waist up. The lower half is so bad, but the waist up is so great that sometimes he can do this. He can leave his front foot pointed straight down the hash. He can leave his hip firing straight down the hash, and he can throw a deep out and put it on a dot. But look, the ball is misplaced. The ball is misplaced. Hey, that, that thing is swinging. That thing sounding like it's got sound effects. Again, that's that ball coming out of his hand. But hey, guess what? Incompletion. It is no good. See you. Third down, just punted. Appreciate you. Appreciate you for coming. Why? Because your lower half mechanics ain't great, brother. That's why. They're not consistent. All right, let's get to this Fresno game. Everybody wants to hop up on me about. I got that deer whistle on that ball. Yeah, I don't know nothing about none of deer whistles. You can't tell. <laughs> I ain't really no hunter. Can't be hunting. Ain't got no time. Too busy grinding the tape. Hey, I ain't trying to do it. Yeah, that's the reason I ain't comparing him to him. I'm telling you the mechanics are matching it. I'm talking about we're comparing a 17-year-old true freshman to a couple 20-year-old NFL veterans. First of all, it's one 20-year-old NFL veteran. It's Aaron Rodgers. And it's because literally no one else has these mechanics. No one. They don't do this. No one does it. Find me the quarterback that is 100% hyperextended at front foot strike. Find it. I'll wait. If you can bring it to me, let me know, and then we'll come back and have this discussion, Cameron. If you can find me, the, I don't care if he's 17 years old, 18 years old, if you can find me the quarterback that is having great success, great success, if he's having great success with these mechanics, bring it to me. Other than that, shh, that's why. It's the only other dude to ever do it. And that's why coaches are telling him constantly, hey, we got to change these things, man. We got to change these things. We can't be doing this. We can't be doing this. Hey, how about this? That's why I say he's got the decision making of Brett Favre. Check this out. A little shovel pass. How about them apples? I ain't saying he can't be good. I'm telling you he can't be consistently great. Go look at the stat sheet, guys. Go look at the stat sheet. I'm a, I'm a grind the tape guy. But guess what? What I'm showing you right now on the tape matches the statistics. The statistics do this. They do this. They go up and down, up and down, up and down. He goes 65% completion percentage for 350 yards, four scores. Next week, throws three picks, puts the, a ball on the ground a couple times, and throws for 250 yards on 44, 48% completion percentage. Why? Because his mechanics are inconsistent. But, hey, man, that one day, though, he looked great. Yeah, he did. This first half looked great. Four fifty-five. Hey, how about this ball? Again, arm talent, exceptional, but front foot strike. Look, check out the front foot. Ain't got no weight on it. He's hyper, he's fully hyperextended right there. And he's kind of just whipping it around the defender. Arm talent's phenomenal. Don't ever get it wrong. Don't ever get it twisted. Dude can absolutely flick the football. But, hey, do we really have to throw this ball? Because what I'm going to show you later in the game, remember this. Remember this play. Matter of fact, I'm going to give it to you from the tight or from the wide. Remember this play, okay? Overhang defender. Remember him. RPO action. Remember it. They are going stretch zone, RPO, slant off the back. Remember it, okay? Hold on to me. All you guys watching this, stick around for five minutes because I'm going to show you. Look, 
he throws it into an incredibly tight window right here, an incredibly tight window, and it is a dart, okay? Bam, all right? Great ball, touchdown, great stuff, awesome, good for you. Now, we're going through 921, I think is what my notes say. You ain't even got to wait a minute. I think this is it. Might have been 521 on my notes. Oh, no, this is 921. This is, a, this is just a bad decision. Hey, guys, how about this ball security? How about we just go run around with the ball in one hand like this right here? Like there ain't elite pass rushers around us in the SEC. We're going to run around with a ball in our hand. We're just going to run around. Oh, we finally put two hands on it. Oh, and then we're going to throw it back. Oh, ball should have been picked. We, we, not only are we just running around trying to create plays, not throwing the ball away, um, we're going to flip our hips, throw it back across the field. How about them apples? What kind of decision making is that? Why? Ah. Throw the ball away. Throw the ball away. Throw the ball away now. Don't even reverse field. You ain't that kind of athlete. You know, four. All right. I've been asked. I've been people have been asking me, hey, did his mechanics get cleaned up? Did his mechanics get cleaned up? Did did they get better? A little bit better. Ball still underthrown, though. Check it out. Ball still underthrown. Why? Because it's really, really hard to time this up over and over again. When he times it up great, it looks amazing. When he doesn't, ball's underthrown. It's a completion. Great for you. But if you saw from the tight, it should have been a touchdown. That dude is 100% leaving right now. He's got to slow down. That little slow, that little two steps of him slowing down, no longer a touchdown. Now, I wish we could see his feet right here because I guarantee you he's doing the same nonsense of not getting to a front knee bend, at least a powerful position. He is not converting power to his front knee. Thirteen oh two. We're almost done, guys. I hope you remember that play, though. Hope you remember that RPO. I mean, this is just this. None of this makes sense. This is his. This is his sophomore year. Everybody told me he got so much better. Did he get coachable? Did he get coached up? What is this? Ain't nobody in the world teaching this. Where are our feet going? We just gonna whip it around? And now, yeah, hey, look, we got a ball completed over the middle of the field. That's fine. That might look like great ball placement. That's fine. It's touch and go, though. He's either going to be red hot or he's going to be a knot. He's either going to come out, throw for 350 yards, or he's going to throw a whole bunch of inter interceptions on 50% completion. Maybe that's why Kirby ain't played him. Maybe that's why Munkin ain't played him. Y'all stop with all this Carson Beck transfer. And that, that kid ain't thinking about nothing right now except playing football. I can tell you right now. I know y'all talking over here in the comments. Y'all cut that crap out. That kid's got no thoughts right now other than trying to win games and win a starting job for the University of Georgia right now. At the end of the season, things might, discussions might change. But right now, that dude is doing nothing but thinking about Georgia football. I can tell you, confirm it right now. He is thinking about nothing but Georgia football. So stop it. 1703. All I got in my notes right here is absolute laser. Absolute laser. And it is. I know the film's a little grainy, but check it out. Left hash throwing a comeback all the way across the field. Absolute laser. But again, he's front foot popping. Let's slow it down. You can actually see it here. He's front foot popping. The mechanics did not change, guys. This looks like the same exact guy. Same exact kid. Watch him. Whoop. He's jumping. He's jumping at the point of release. Just like Rodgers. He is jumping. Nobody leaves their platform like this when they throw the football. Hey, but it's a dime, though. It's a dime. Check it. Woo, that ball's right there. That is a doin. But the next one might be two rows up in the stands. 19. All right. Y'all remember that play? I hope y'all remember that play. I hope y'all remember that play. Here it is. Check it out. 
stretch zone, overhang defender, running the slant off the backside of the RPO. Watch what happens. Oh, you telling me, wait a minute, you're telling me the defense adjusts to what I'm doing? What? What? What is that? I've never seen that happen before. Why, why, are they, why are they not doing what they did three possessions ago? Well, because you scored a touchdown on them. Been an hour into this thing, so I'm getting real sarcastic. I apologize. Um, this is why I can't coach no high school kids, because I would hurt their feelings. Hey, look at the front knee strike, though. That front foot is dead. It is completely dead. Look at it. I mean, it's not even I – mean, it might as well not even be there. Look, he stands still after he releases this football. He don't even bring the backside foot. He doesn't do anything. He is dead. This is all arm. This is nothing but arm right here. I'm just going to, you know, just flick it. And guess what? Linebacker right in his chest. Right to him. Because he got away with it the first time. Remember the first time? It was a tight window throw. He waited for the second window, got right there, and touchdown. Next time, pick. Red zone pick at that. No bueno. Twenty two forty four. I got two more plays for you guys. What are we looking at right here? Hey, he can throw on the run. He can throw on the run, but guess what? So can Stetson Bennett. He can get out, move around a little bit. He can do this. Watch this dart. That ball is scudded. Oh, is scudded. Watch this. Watch it full speed. How much of this can he still do, though? That's the question. How much can he get out? I mean, look, he's not leaving defenders. Don't get me wrong. This is fully healthy before a knee injury, and he ain't leaving defenders. What does scudded mean? Scud missile? It's a term in baseball, a scud missile. What is the past tense of scud? Scudded, that ball scudded. I don't know. That's the way I talk. Y'all got what I was mean. Y'all, y'all figured out what I was saying though. That ball's thrown like a piss missile. That's what it means. All right, last play of the night. It was his last play of his college career to date. Okay, and we ain't gonna look at the injury. What I don't want y'all to look at is his legs. I know that's hard to say, um, or hard to tell you to do because a a lot of people don't listen and b. As soon as I say something like that, everybody wants to look at it. But here's the deal. Blitz. Look at it. They blitzing, baby. They are coming after your butt. They are coming after you, son. They're even bringing the safety. They are coming downhill, coming for you. So what do you got to know? What do you got to know as a a quarterback? You got to know where your hots are. You got to know where your hot route is. There is one built in every single time. And if there's not, the wide receiver is taught to convert his route to get into the face of the quarterback immediately. Guess who's doing it? This wide receiver right here. Guess who is wide open? This dude right here. Just throw it over. Just throw it to him. Live to fight another day, baby. He's wide open. Matter of fact, if he catches this ball, he might run into the end zone. But instead, what's JT doing? JT's holding on to the football, trying to hit Pittman on this corner route right here. And instead, he gets sacked and folded up like a cheap suit. When all day long, all day long, when they send in house splits like this, baby, we got to hit our hot. We have got to check down. Got to. Boom, right there. Give it to them. Don't try to avoid rush, turn around, spin, do none of that. Identify blitz, get the ball out. Simple as simple as that. This is sophomore tape, guys. All that, all that he's just a 18-year-old freshman, you know, poor JT. He ain't playing around nobody. He ain't got no weapons. All that's bull crap. All that's excuse-making bull crap. He's playing college football. He's going to get evaluated like a college football player. And this was his last play of college football to date right now. And it is a utter mental mistake. Utter mental mistake. I, I ain't even going to talk about the physicals, okay? This is an utter mental mistake as a 19-year-old sophomore who at this point has 12 games under his belt, 12 starts. You can't do this kind of stuff, ever. You got to know your hots. And if you do, well, you get hurt. So here's my thing, guys. Look, I sat here and I did what I did for this reason right now, okay? There is a reason why USC let a five-star walk out the door. 
Caden Slovis won that job, won that team, everything. They let this guy that everybody in the Georgia fan base is saying, oh, he's our savior. He's our savior. They let him walk out the door. Walk out the door. Why? I don't know. He gets to Georgia. Okay. Kirby Smart comes and tells everybody to their face before the Auburn game, he is cleared. What's everybody in the Georgia fan base start doing? Oh, uh, Kirby doesn't mean that. He's just he's just saying that so he can, you know, play games with Auburn and make him prepare for two quarterbacks. Okay, so we go four weeks of Kirby just playing games, right? And everybody making excuses. I oh, must be still hurt. Must be still hurt. Her rumors of a third operation must be hurt. Um, he's running with the ones today because Stetson Bennett can't throw a football. Must not be that hurt. His people came out in 24-7 sports and, and, and laid a story saying, JT's healthy. He's ready to face live fire. I read that one to you on, on the Patreon account the other day. Nobody wanted to believe it then. That was before the Florida game. He was ready to go. So he gets run out and beat out at a job by Caden Slovis, a three-star recruit. This ain't Justin Fields. This ain't Jacob Eason. This ain't Jake Fromm, for that matter, who was borderline five-star. Um, this is Caden Slovis, one of these quote unquote developmental quarterbacks. What happened? I'm going to tell you what happened. They got 12 games of game tape. They know who this guy is. Now, can he be great? Are there signs of greatness? 100%. 100%. There are absolutely signs of greatness. But you can't just sit here and say he's going to be the savior because he threw for 4,200 yards with three of the best high school receivers and trio of wide receivers the high school football has ever seen. Find me three high, high school wide receivers like that. Amon, Amon St. Rob Brown, great wide receiver. Going to be, like I told you at the beginning of the show, a top 60 pick in the NFL. Okay, Brew McCoy, number nine overall player in 2019 by 24-7 Sports. And Nico Bamigio. Playing for Cal, four star out of California. Find me a wide receiver core with those three dudes that's not named Grayson. And even Grayson don't have them like that right now. Okay. Find me those three dudes and let me know. And then, yeah, I'll show you a quarterback that's lighting it up. So don't, don't bring me five star rankings when a guy's played 12 games of college tape. Bring me, this is what he looked like in college. And then if you want to make some more, you know, excuses which is what they are um then bring them to me okay um but it's not the end all be all right now which is why over and over and over again kirby's come to the microphone and told you that stetson bennett and dewan mathis are our best chance to win football games okay so he told you over and over and over again it's why i've told you on our patreon account if you go sign up for it for ten dollars a month you get og intel it's why I've been telling my guys over and over and over again, JT Daniels is healthy. He's just not the best quarterback in the room right now, okay? He's ready to play. He told you that. He's just not the best quarterback in the room right now. They don't believe that. Why? Because he's up and down. He has one play where he does look like Aaron Rodgers, and he has another play where he might not need to be on a, you know, power five football field because he's making terrible mistakes and he's got terrible mechanics, and they're not consistent. But I don't mean to bag on the kid. I just want y'all to be realistic. I want – this is why fan bases get so messed up. Y'all y'all don't – most people don't do this for you. And I'm not pumping me up. I'm, I'm being real with you. Most people do not do this. They do not sit down and say, this is what it looks like. This is what it looked like for 12 games. This is what it was. This is the evaluation. This is the film. Not some, hey, he went to the camp and did this, yada, yada, yada. It's a re- hey, man. Five stars bust all the time, all the time. They're more right than they are wrong. Don't get me wrong. They're, they're more right than they are wrong. But every once in a while, you have a guy that just doesn't live up to number three quarterback overall, like he was quote unquote listed coming out of high school. Okay. So before I let y'all go, got a lot of people here right now. If you haven't already, sign up for the Patreon account. We do this kind of stuff all week long, all week long. I got some Patreons right now that I know are in the chat. Y'all, y'all let the people know in the chat right now that it's worth every dime you spend. It's $5 for two videos a week. It is $10 for, I think we give you three videos a week, a game day watch party, 
and all the intel that I can dig up um, from practice. So it's worth it. So join over there. The link is in the bio. If you don't know where it is, head up, hit up my Twitter account uh, or go to grindthetape.com. It's right there for you. Um, so with that being said, I'm out of here. Appreciate y'all for being here. Um, we'll see you another time. I'm going to bring some more uh, live film studies like this on Wednesday night, especially if games keep getting delayed. So um, we'll see if we can answer any. We have any more super subs before I hit out here? See, Damien said, worth every penny. Appreciate you, brother. Uh, Preston said, it's well worth the money. Sign up. Um, so worth it if guys deaf do the OG. Uh, appreciate you, brother. Worth every penny. I think we already got Damien's. Yeah. So love your stuff. Love you too, JS. Don't really know you. Um, appreciate you, though, guys. I'm heading out. I got to go grind some more tape. We'll see y'all tomorrow.